Elf the Eagle by Ron Smith and Ruth Campbell Elf the Eagle, written by Ron Smith, illustrated by Ruth Campbell As soon as Elf the Eagle broke through his shell and popped his head out into the wide, wide world, three surprises greeted him. First, his egg tooth, the big bump on his beak, throbbed from all the chipping he'd done from inside the egg. He knocked himself silly with two days of rat a tat tatting. Second, his eyelids felt as heavy as a sea lion's chins, and everything he looked at was as fuzzy as a pussy willow. Finally, his legs felt wobbly, as if he were trying to stand on a pool of jellyfish. He kept falling over. He was quite discouraged. Quite. He just wanted to go to sleep, and so he closed his eyes, but not before noticing that he shared the nest with another shadowy creature. Who was that? he wondered. He shivered, kept his eyes shut, and began counting to 1,000. That would keep him safe. A few days later, when Elf opened his eyes and saw that he could see, he blinked twice, let out a squawk, and quickly shut his eyes as tight as an oyster. He took a deep breath, then inched closer to the edge of the nest to get a better view. Slowly, he opened his right eye and peeked out beyond the weave of sticks and twigs and moss. This couldn't be. He was in a tree, high off the ground. His parents had built a nest at the very top of a tree. Well, almost at the very top. Near where the last branches forked out below a snag that pierced the sky like a giant spear. Why, why had they built so high? Elf almost fainted. He felt as if he'd been swallowed by a humongous dark whirlpool. What had his parents been thinking? The nearest branch below the nest was half a sky away, and far below that, nearly at the bottom of the world, he thought he saw water, a pond, perhaps a lake, and some blackberry bushes, dagger ferns, salal, and rocks, plenty of sharp, scary rocks. What had his parents been thinking? When Elf stepped back and turned around, there, standing opposite him, was a bigger version of himself. It was the shadowy creature he'd first seen shortly after he'd hatched. The one he had heard his parents call Edwina. Was that his big sister? The one he'd been bumping into whenever his mother and father came to feed him? Was it Edwina with whom he'd fought over delicious strips of meat? He had never dared to look her way as he gulped down his food. Elf had quite an appetite. Edwina eyed him up and down, stretched her wings, and let herself be lifted off her feet by a gust of wind. Already she had dark brown feathers. Again she caught a blast of wind and rose, hovering. She was almost airborne. Edwina, Elf screeched, look out! Scaredy cat, Edwina screeched back. You're a runt. That's why our parents named you Elf. They thought you might grow up small. Now he had something else to worry about. His name. What had his parents been thinking? Elf's father flew over and dropped some cedar sprigs into the nest. Elf took a deep, deep sniff and the scent cleared his head. Then he watched his father fly to his nighttime roost, where he would stand guard over Elf and Edwina until first light. At night, under the stars, being at the top of the tree didn't bother Elf. He often went for a walk about the nest, which annoyed Edwina. 
But as soon as the sun crept into the morning sky, he would snuggle down into the twigs and branches and moss at the bottom of the nest, in amongst the bones and feathers. A couple of weeks later, Edwina hopped up on the rim of the nest and began flapping her wings, just like their mother and father did. What a show-off, Elf thought. Who does she think she is? He wanted to warn her that what she was doing was very, very dangerous, but secretly he admired her bravery. Obviously, she didn't feel butterflies in her stomach, not like he did when he looked out over the edge of the nest. Suddenly. Edwina leapt forward and disappeared. Elf imagined his sister at the base of the tree with her beak stuck in the ground. He couldn't bear to look until he heard his parents making happy sounds, shrieking in delight. When Elf blinked his eyes open, he saw Edwina high above the nest, her wings spread, riding the wind. Now it's your turn, Elf, he heard his mother say. Come on, runt, Edwina teased. It's easy. Even you can do it. But Elf wouldn't budge, not one tiny bit. What was his mother thinking? And Edwina was no help squawking at him like that. Granted, he was now almost as big as she was, and his grey baby down was turning to thick brown feathers. But there was no way he was going to leave the nest. Flying was simply out of the question. He started counting to a thousand. At midday, when the sun was hot and at its peak, Elf felt hungry. Yet neither his mother nor his father had brought him anything to eat. No tasty snakes, no field mice, no rabbit. What was going on? Just then, Elf's mother flew close to the nest with a large, juicy lake trout in her talons. Elf thought for sure she was bringing this delicious fish to him, but instead, she circled away and landed on a nearby fur snag. Elf heard his stomach grumble. He tried letting his wings fill with air, but one wing went up while the other went down and he fell over. Then he tried flapping his wings, but he gripped the nest so tightly with his talons that he couldn't lift off. After a few minutes, his mother left her perch and swept down towards him, Passing so near to the nest, he caught the scent of her catch. Again, she flew off. The next day, his mother returned with another trout, and as she approached, Alf jumped up on the rim of the nest, forgetting about his fear of heights. He was starving. He teetered towards her, but just as she came within reach, Alf lost his balance, and the next thing he knew, he was tumbling head over tail feathers. Down, 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 hurtling towards a large rock outcrop that loomed as big as a whale. Flap your wings, Alf, flap your wings, he heard his mother call from above. But when he did, he seemed to plummet even faster and faster, beak first towards the earth. He closed his eyes. Harder, Alf. Flap your wings harder. Do it now. When his mother and father used that tone of voice, he always did as they said. Now, he heard his mother and father scream together. And so he did. With every ounce of energy in his feathery body, with every muscle, he paddled his wings. Both at the same time. Suddenly... He felt an updraft of air and turned a somersault, then another sum somersault, followed by a figure eight. Someone as large as Edwina, he thought, would never be able to pull off such tricks. Soon he was arching back up into the sky, the world slipping, racing along beneath him. Then he flapped his wings once, 
twice, three times, and he was gliding, climbing higher and higher, and he knew then that like his mother, father, and sister, he was a beautiful shape wheeling and soaring in the blue, blue sky. The next morning, Elf sat on a branch below the nest, below the family airy, and watched down spread along the jagged rim of the mountains. He couldn't wait. He felt his feathers twitch. As soon as he saw it, he would fly up into the sky and touch the sun. The End <laughs>